Hi, I'm Erin James. Welcome to this presentation on the Speech Bubble Vocabulary app. It's going to be amazing and I'm so glad you're here. Here it is, our Speech Bubble Vocabulary app. We wanted to focus on a real world language app using personalized flashcards, relevant bite-sized lessons, and engaging evidence-based immersion techniques. Meet our persona, Kathy Robertson. She is a 62-year-old therapist from Evergreen, Colorado. She's married and an empty nester. Her goals include she wants to retain the Spanish she learned, understand and participate in Spanish conversations, station at work and keep her mind fresh as her body ages while enjoying her learning experience. Here's some quotes from Kathy so you can get to know her better. I want to retain the real world Spanish I learned living in Chile and in doing so I hope to keep my thinking sharp. I want to enjoy learning and actually look forward to it. Myself, I am a visual learner, so it helps to both see and hear new vocabulary. Also, in my mind, if I associate a new term with something personal to me, I tend to remember it. User research. So we focused on a demographic of women ages 50 to 65, and Kathy is our persona that fits this demographic to a T. She wants to learn a language through an inexpensive uncomplicated, fun, and age-appropriate vocabulary app. Based on user research and interviews, I learned that many of these women need concise, personalized lessons that focus on repetition, positive reinforcement, and real-world applications. So Kathy's problem is that she needs a way journey down to the bottom here, to efficiently and creatively learn Spanish vocabulary in order to retain the language she learned, enhance her connections with Spanish-speaking clients, and sharpen her memory skills. We will see this to be true when she can communicate with clients and recall language as needed. Our problem statement is that we believe that by creating an app that is age-appropriate, visually stimulating, engaging, and promotes retention through creative immersion techniques, Kathy will achieve retention of communication skills, learn new Spanish vocabulary, and da -da -da -da, sharpen her memory. Ah, stay on it. Okay. Um, Problems and solutions. So we wanted to focus on certain pain points of our users and provide solutions for those pain points. Apps like Duolingo, number one, feel like they're made for kids, not mature women. And so we really wanted Speech Bubble's aesthetics and graphics to be geared towards adults. A lot of generic flashcards don't have visuals or sound and they're hard to remember. So we really wanted to focus on data-based learning structures, such as appealing to to the four types of learners, auditory, visual, kinesthetic, reading, and writing. Most language apps are expensive. We wanted to offer tiered costs, upgrade options, and make sure that our free version is awesome. Um, this demographic didn't grow up in like a digital age, right? So they really long for that human-to-human -human connection. And they also want to make sure that the language that they're learning is actually usable and practical in real world settings. So to solve this problem, we created a lot of options to connect and collaborate with other users and our famous 30 day challenge for real world practice in an engaging and fun way. All right, the wireframing and prototyping process. This is my first user flow for the onboarding. And so you can see that I created a mapped out user flow to know which way to go with my designs and to make it as usable as possible. I went on to design um, the branding and logo for our speech bubble app and so you can see here is our color scheme which we definitely had our persona Kathy in mind and our adorable speech bubble little logo. This is the marble prototype. I used all of my sketches combined to create a prototype so our users could test the app and we could make the correct revisions to improve anything that needed. Um, a little boost to improve. So here we go. We'll click on a couple of these so you can see you can sign up. It'll take you through the onboarding process, highlighting a lot of our um, 
personalized flashcards and other unique things about the app. You can choose your language, got your menu, you can go to creating flashcards, etc, etc. These are my initial wireframe sketches. You can see the splash screen, the login, the home page, and the admin page. Here we have our onboarding. Like I said, it's highlighting our spaced repetition, our real world, well, real world language skills and bite-sized relevant lessons and engaging with real people through our app in safe situations. Okay, these are the flashcard pages. Let me face up just a little bit. Um, you can create your own flashcards. You can add your own images to promote visual learning techniques. You can also listen to the words and practice on the go. Here's flashcards sketches part two, front and backs of cards, and our little exciting celebrations when you finish um, to encourage motivation, and you can check your stats for all the points you earned. So that takes us to the usability test plan. Here we go. So we tested the sign up and login process, language selection, creating a flashcard, and reviewing the flashcard deck. These tests were designed to enhance usability of the key app requirements and requested design criteria. Okay, the revision summary. We simplified the login page, corrected the order of onboarding pages for better flow, removed distractions from the review flashcard deck, and changed a few things for clarity and direction, including improving headings. So here's a sneak peek at our prototype revisions. You can see we updated the language on the um, sign in page to say sign up and log in, which was a lot less confusing for most of our users. And we also redirected the onboarding page directly to the choose your language so that nobody missed that step, um, which we found was a little tricky to find in earlier versions of the app. We also changed this three dot situation as a lot of our participants were trying to swipe to a more um, natural step one, step two, step three for clarity and direction. And then we also added text underneath our logos to prevent any kind of confusion as to where the student is going in the app. We streamlined our headings to make them consistent across the app. And we also greatly simplified our flashcard revision pages because our participants said that it was just too busy and they couldn't focus on learning what they were supposed to learn. So we took out the edit button and any little pop-up information and just kept it as simple as possible to promote that focus for our students. So improvements and next steps. We have a lot of exciting ideas. We're going to develop new immersion challenges, animated flashcards, vocabulary scan and go feature, which is super cool. It's almost like the plant apps where you can scan the tree and it'll tell you what it is, except you're going to scan vocabulary items like a banana or your toothbrush, and then you can either just have the app tell you what it is from your scan and go and also from the scan and go you can create flashcards directly from your photo of the scan so we're very excited about that um, and then we also wanted to create an option for accurate stock flashcard decks for popular categories a lot of our users that had used other vocabulary apps were concerned that some of the decks uploaded by normal people may not be accurate and so we have a team of people that are sorting through these uploaded decks and correcting where they need to correct editing and making sure that the marked decks are accurate so that way a user can know hey this deck has been checked it's accurate i feel confident that this will be a good thing to learn um we are also also working on developing more incentives, streaks, and age-appropriate award systems to promote motivation and our number one goal to support our students in reaching their goals. 
Okay, so what did I learn from the design process? I learned the step-by-step -step processes of a UX designer. I have a way better understanding of the job that the UX designer plays. And I learned it's important to find participants in the right demographic in order to collect accurate data. Also, to know the direction you're going before you start going there to save time and energy. I really learned that to focus um, the entire process on user pain points and how to solve them because that's the ultimate goal of a UX designer and that good designs of course require a lot of revisions. Thank you so much for joining me on this exciting journey through UX design and I hope to see you in the speech bubble app soon. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.